Hi, this is Silverpot Reads, and today we are bringing you Chapter 11 of Saw and Tales Dreams Come True. And before we get started, I just want to remind you guys to leave a like down below if you like the video, and also leave me a comment down below telling me your favorite part of this story, or maybe a story that I could possibly read next. Anyways, thanks again for watching, let's get started on this Chapter 11, Damp Days. Sonic stood atop the grassy plain. The cool evening wind flew through his quills, making them dance on the gentle flurries. Tail struggled up the hill after him, his legs weak like jelly in the presence of his sapphire hero. Tails lifted up his chin, eyes glued to the muscular yet slightly lanky physique of Sonic. He looked so beautiful, his eyes peering off into the horizon watching the blazing sphere of heat sink below the low lining hills and the large individual strands of long green grass mixing in with his ankles. Tails' heart basically skipped a beat when Sonic turned his head to glance at the golden Kitsune, slightly increasing his pace now to reach the top of the hill. The world seemed to fall away, drained of all color but him, standing bathed in the orange tinge of the setting sun. It seemed like eons as Tail drew ever closer to the one he idolized so, but in reality it had only been a few seconds. As he eventually made it to the top of the hill, Sonic reached out his hands, silently signaling his love to come closer without needing to speak aloud. A small smirk crossed the cobalt hedgehog's muzzle as he awaited his love. An array of lovely pink cherry blossom leaves floated down around them as the two were bathed in sunlight. Sonic placed his hand on Tails' cheek, who nestled it into the warm palm of Sonic. Sonic pulled the kit closer and pressed his sweet lips against his, expertly combining firmness, subtlety, and softness in a passionate display of affection. Sonic was so good at it, swishing his tongue tantalizingly around in Tails' mouth, causing an immense amount of pleasure. The golden fox shuddered in delight. Shivering from satisfaction, he felt completely consume his body. An amazing, indescribable, incredible feeling rushed through his body, filling his insides completely from the tip of his pointy ears to the white tips of his twin tails. He closed his eyes and let this feeling flood out of him. Damn, not again, Tails whined, sitting up in his bed and rubbing the sleep out of his eyes. He glanced over to his bedside clock, noting that it was only three in the morning. Tails quietly slipped out of the warmness of his covers, being careful to avoid the wet patch that had soaked into his seats as he walked over and drew a bath. Tails sighed softly, quietly ripping off his sheets from his bed and soaking them in the tub before hanging them on a nearby heater. Tails then opened his drawers, taking out the last of his sheets and remaking his bed. Through the whole ordeal, he made sure to be no louder than a sneaky mouse running about the house. Why does this keep happening? I wet myself for the third time this week, he sighed to himself collapsing back on the freshly made bed and wrapping the blankets around him, cocooning himself in their warm, inviting heat. He was so sick of constantly having these nightmares. No matter what he tried, nothing seemed to fix his issue. He decided to talk to Sonic, to hopefully learn about some way that he could solve this as soon as possible. At least school ends tomorrow, he finally smiled, drifting off into the land of dreams a second time that night. And don't forget to read your assigned books over the winter break. I'll see you all bright and early next year. Happy holidays, everybody. Rouge beamed, finishing her last syllable at the same moment that the bell chimed, indicating the end of the school day and the school year. Cheers erupted from the teenagers like a volcano, echoing around the room and through the suddenly noisy hallways. Hands flew up in the air, papers began flying, tossed away by carefree students, and dancing was had as all the children rushed out of the room. Sonic, wait up, Tails moaned, trying and failing to push through the crowds of merry people who clogged up the hallway, separating the two friends at their lockers. 
I'll meet you at like the park at the, like we promised we'd do at the end of school, Sonic yelled over the roar of the crowded people as his white gloved hands slowly dissolved into the sea of the different colored shirts. Tails turned to the locker, unzipping the top of his bag and pulling out the remaining book stationery and his school laptop haphazardly into the depth of his bag. He slammed his locker closed, locking up after him and hoisting his pack onto his back. Hey, Tails. A shy voice addressed him, barely audible over the chatter of everybody else. Tails turned his head to see the small rabbit standing next to him, rubbing her foot awkwardly against her bare ankle due to her rolled-up jeans that she wore up that day. Oh, hey, Cream, what's up? Tails smiled in reply, turning to walk down the hall and out of school with her. I need to talk to you about last weekend, she began. Oh, when we were dancing, you seemed kind of distant and sad. I just had a lot on my mind that night, I'm sorry. Tails interrupted, hurrying his pace, excited to meet up with Sonic again. No, it's, it's not that, I just wanted to talk about what we did last night. The kiss we shared, basically. She paused, unable to finish her sentence. Tails, over here! A violet cat motioned with her hand at the other end of the messy hallway, holding open the big glass doors for her friend, who hurried along to meet up with her. See you around, Cream. Tails called, waving as he ran away. I just wanted to say that I love you. Cream finished, holding back tears that pounded against her eyelids. She hung her head, looking at the floor as she began to slide the soles of her shoes across the tiled floor. Unfortunately, she wasn't loud enough when voicing her opinion, and the two-tailed fox, which she adored so much, couldn't hear her and left. Blaze and Tails walked side by side, exchanging basic talk, and what each other had planned for the New Year's break, and Christmas time until the topic of conversation suddenly turned to Tails' love life. So, like anybody yet? Blaze asked, seemingly out of the blue, but in reality she had planned to have this conversation with Tails for a while now. Uh, uh Tails mumbled, avoiding eye contact with the cat. I knew it! What's her name? She questioned, a smirk crossing her face. Tails grimaced slightly at the word her. If only he could tell Blaze the truth. If only he could re reveal that his love was a guy, was his best friend was Sonic. But alas, he could not reveal this truth or he would surely be killed. Or abandoned by everybody. N n nobody he stuttered, but Blaze was clearly not planning to give up anytime soon. Come on, Tails, I thought we were good friends, don't you trust me? She pouted, making fake crying sounds as a joke to try to guilt Tails into telling her. Luckily, Silver appeared around the corner, physically bumping into Tails as he rounded it. Sorry, he apologized to Tails, rubbed his forehead trying to sedate the sudden rush of pain he felt as a small red mark was left, staining his fur. B Blaze, quick, I have a surprise for you! He blurted it out, hardly containing the excitement that was plastered all over his face. He gripped her wrist and ran off with her and tail, matching his pace. This conversation isn't over! She mocked playfully as she looked back at Tails, who was noticeably relieved that Sales Silver had showed up when he did. Tails continued along his path, letting his thoughts wander to fantasize about the blue hero whilst his legs subconsciously carried him, like a leaf on the wind, to the large rolling hills near the southern ocean of the Mobian community. By the time Tails snapped back into reality, oops there goes gravity and realized where his subconsciousness had taken him, he had already reached the bottom of the thick, old wooden trunk of the large oak tree that was situated atop the grassy mound. The snow was still stacked high as the stormy weather never ceased throughout the whole week, but as Tells knelt down, resting against the base of the tree under the shade of produced by the large leaves, he didn't mind the cold sting of the snowflakes. He brushed aside the white carpet of snow that blanketed the land, revealing a small grassy patch to which he parked his behind. Tails opened his bag and took out his diary, flipping through the pages that had slowly filled out throughout the year. The doodles of Sonic took up most of the pages, with small definite descriptions of the day's events, but he quickly flipped through, stopping at the day in November, when Sonic finally admitted his love for the young fox. He smoothed the surface of the crumpled paper with his gloved thumb. 
He remembered back to that fateful day, which changed the young kid's life. All depression, fear, and anxiety seemed to be completely replaced with love, passion, and devotion to the sapphire blur that day. I st stood there at the door, allowing the freezing cold winds to enter my humble abode, snow staining my carpet as I marveled at him. Although he was downtrodden, sleep-deprived, and sickly-looking, he was still as handsome as that night that I fell for him. I tried to speak, apologizing for my previous transgressions, but that was when he did something amazingly, indescribably, gratifyingly pleasing. He pressed his lips against mine. I practically melted right there on the spot. Me too. I do love you, Tails. He spoke melodically before he turned his sprint away. I couldn't move. I couldn't even feel the harsh winter winds whip my face and sting my eyes. All I could feel was joy, happiness, and most importantly, love. What you got there, buddy? A voice came from behind him as a gloved hand rested upon Tails' shoulder, sending shivers down his spine. N nothing he replied embarrassed, quickly closing the diary as he fumbled it around his grasp. In the young fox's panic state, his grip loosened on the leather-bound journal as it fell from his grip towards the wet snow that littered the ground below. Sonic, reflexes almost as quick as his speedy legs, shot out his hand, catching the diary millimeters above the snow. He smiled, handing it back to Tails, who thanked him quietly, stuffing the journal back into his backpack and zipping it up tightly. W was that your diary? He asked. Tails simply nodded, not saying a word. After realizing that he wouldn't get a reply from the golden kit, Sonic continued. I know a diary is personal, but if you trust me, I'd love to read it sometime. It would mean the world to me. Sonic smiled, wrapping his arms around Tails, enveloping him in his warmth. Tails returned to the hug, pulling Sonic down onto the snow with him and rolled on top of him. Hey! Sonic replied playfully. You're getting snow all over me. Oh, am I making you damp? Tails joked, snuggling up on Sonic's bare chest and swirling his fingertips in a circle formation, causing Sonic to chuckle. You've got no idea, he replied, a grin creeping across his face. Sonic waited, allowing Tails to get more comfortable on top before he got ready to strike. He slowly shifted some of his weight onto the back of his calves, making sure that Tails didn't feel his subtle movements. I should be on top more often, Tails laughed to himself. This is so much more comfortable. Oh yeah? Sonic questioned, changing Tails' attention off of him. As Tails opened his mouth ready to reply, Sonic took his opening and pounced. He shifted all of his remaining weight onto his heels and rolled over, flipping Tails gently so he crashed into a large pile of snow behind him. Sonic then fell on top, smiling proudly as he touched Tails' nose with his own. Lapis Lazuli met Emerald as their eyes shone together, staring intently into each other's eyes, before a small smirk crossed Tails' face, taking Sonic slightly off guard. Tails quickly used his twin tails beneath him as extra momentum to flick, flick Fox off of him, bouncing on to reclaim the covered, coveted position on top of the other, out of the cold snow. This continued for a while, the two boys wrestling for a better position in snow as they laughed to each other, when suddenly they both began to feel the force of gravity pulling them downwards. At this point, Tails had had his head near Sonic's shoes, and vice versa, when they both felt themselves tumble down the hill, rolling together. The Blue Hedgehog and Golden Fox continued down the hill, getting covered in snow as they went down and the motion stopped, and they fell, sprawled out at the bottom of the hill. They lay on their backs, arms outstretched and legs intertwined as they panted, trying to recover their breasts as the adrenaline left their systems, now that they were safe. What are you two doing? A high-pitched voice pierced the serenity. Sonic turned his head, still lying flat on the sand, to see a pink hedgehog run up to them, anger flushing over her face. Why are you two tangled up together? She asked again, fearing the worst. Oh, hey, Amy, Tails replied casually, sitting up now as Sonic did the same. His legs were positioned over Sonic's, wrapped around the waist at the time. Don't hey me, she yelled. Why are your legs around his waist? 
Suddenly, the color drained from his face and he was replaced with fear. Did Amy see us on top of the hill? Did she watch us as we rolled around together? His thoughts ran wild, taking over his mind and making him unable to perform a reply, except for a few mumbled, inaudible words that he strung together, which made no sense to the pink hedgehog. What is he trying to say? Sonic began, maneuvering around Tails' body and sat up properly, brushing the snow out of his quills and bandages. Is that we were walking on top of the hill when we slipped and fell down. Thanks for being so concerned. He concluded with a sarcastic inflection on those final words. Oh my chaos, you poor thing! Amy cried out, shedding her anger instantly like a different personality had taken control of her state of mind. She rushed over to him and cradled him in his arms whispering apologies into his ear and confirming to herself and Sonic that she knew all along that it was a silly misunderstanding. Sonic struggled to breathe, trying his hardest to pry her arms away from him with little success. Finally, he managed to get the hedgehog off of him as he walked over with an outstretched arm to help his friend up as well. Sorry about everything, she beamed. I'll let you get back to your walk now. See you around. She sung out, skipping off where she had come from. What a weirdo. Sonic said, nudging Tails with his elbow, who giggled in reply. The two stood side by side, looking at each other simultaneously in silence. They burst out, un uncontrollable fits of laughter. The reality of what had just occurred washed over them both in unison, and they couldn't help but see the humor in their situation. They both collapsed back onto the snow-covered ground as they tried to cease their incessant laughter. Sonic swiveled his head into the snow, staring at Tails, who had copied his hero. Sonic gripped Tails' hand and, without saying a word, placed a small kiss on the kit's lip. I love you, he said quietly once he retreated from the kiss. You too, Sonic. Tails smiled, shuffling closer to the sapphire body of Sonic. Now that the school year is over, we can spend a lot more time together, Tails sighed happily. Sonic simply raised his hand giving Tails a thumb up. Nothing more needed to be said in that moment, as the two just lay there, together, until the sun began to set and the winter sky. Anyways, thanks again for watching this video today. That's the end of Chapter 11 of Son Tales Dreams Come True. We'll be back next time with Chapter 12. Like I said in the beginning, please leave a like on the video if you liked it. Comment your favorite part of the story, and if you don't have a favorite part of your story, maybe comment what you want me to read next. Again, thanks for watching. You guys have a great day slash night, whatever it is that you're at. Bye bye